I'm on the top of the mountain. Or just a very large rock. But I feel like this is an appropriate place to talk about this bike. Now it's called the Radiant and was designed by Tony Ellsworth who has designed a lot of bikes over the last few years. Uh, and he's done a fantastic job with it. It has a carbon fiber frame, a torque sensor, automatic transmission, it's bell drive. The style and design is just something I've never seen before. It does cost a pretty penny of $5,995. So let's see what it can do, starting off with the speed test. So the Radiant is a class one e-bike, so there's no throttle. It does have three pedal assist modes. And I'm gonna show you how fast it can go. It's, it's not really a fast bike. Uh, it's rated up to 20 miles per hour, but it does come with a 500 watt Shimano Steps motor with the torque sensor. And that is just, I mean, that's high end. That is a very nice motor. And that's powered by a 630 watt hour internal battery, which does take three hours to recharge. Has a nice filling, you know, charging port there, or cover rather. I've got a nice flat stretch of trail and I'm gonna start off with pedal assist one and show you how fast all three can go. So for eco mode, that's, let's see, 14, uh, 14, 15 miles an hour. And this is normal at 70 RPM, 16, 15, 16 miles an hour. And then on high, still averaging 70 RPM, that's 18, 19. And just for fun, I'm gonna increase my cadence, see if I can get this going any faster. There's 22. There's 80 RPM. Ooh, that is a workout, that's a good burn, but you can go two to three miles per hour above what the rating is. Now, I don't know what the weight limit is. I couldn't find that information, but with the carbon fiber frame, it has gotta be up there. So uh, I'm gonna show you how fast it can take off from a standstill. I do have a full battery, so let me show you how it does. I'm still on the high mode, flat stretch of trail. Here we go. Oh, and as soon as those pedals move, like a millimeter, that motor kicks on right away. That is very responsive, very reactive, and already up to 20. So, I mean, it's not gonna like throw you back towards the, the back of the bike. It's not designed to do that. But man, as soon as you start cranking those pedals, those cranks, they just, they go. Bike just, just, engages immediately. The Radiant has a range rating of up to 100 miles depending on the pedal assist level that you have it on. For this test, I'm gonna place it up to the highest level. I've got a full charge of the bike. I'm gonna start my tracking app and see how far I can go. my first battery bar and I've gone 7.56 miles so just about eight miles and a cool feature on the screen here is you can see it says high 55 norm 77 eco 111 that does tell you how much how many miles you have per assist level which is kind of cool so hopefully I can get 55 more miles be kind of neat second battery bar and I've hit 18.55 miles and that's the longest range I've ever gotten in two battery bars so this has proven to be quite the bike as far as range goes. I'm gonna stop for the range test and tell you a little bit about the specs of the Radiance starting off with the look and the design. So they call this the Sport Cruiser. It's got an asymmetric carbon fiber frame. You can see half the front fork is missing which I mean that just looks that looks cool. <laughs> looks so cool, kind of freaky looking. And then towards the back you have on the left side the piece attaching to the rear hub, but uh, the right side there's a lower piece but not uh, one that matches the upper one. So it's got a really cool design, sleek look. It's kind of shiny as well. You get up it's a little bit reflective. You can kind of see my camera. It has internal wiring so there's no wiring underneath here. Just gives it a very clean and sleek appearance. It comes in three colors, red, metallic, and blue. They obviously have sent me the blue one, which is just very pretty. I do like the color of that. 
One of the coolest things about this bike is what they call expanding universe geometry. And basically what that means is one size fits all. This can fit a rider from five foot up to six four. And how they've done that is by designing the seat post at a very steep angle. Most seats are just straight up and down. Uh, this one actually, as you raise it up, it pushes back towards the back end of the bike and that expands the cockpit. So basically this space between the handlebars and the seat increases or decreases depending on how high or low the seat is. I'm back up on the bike. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about the way it handles and feels. The posture this gives you feels more like one of those foldable bikes, like where you're sitting in a chair. That's kind of how I describe it anyways. The biggest difference here is that I don't feel top heavy like I do with those foldable bikes. I'm still low to the ground, so I've got good stability. I can handle and turn sharp, not have any problems there. It pretty much stays upright by itself. Now this is also one of the quietest bikes I've ever seen. There's just zero noise coming from that motor. I'll just be quiet and let you listen to it. Let me dive into the cockpit here. The handlebars, you have a 24.8 inch spread and that's actually a really nice height. I, uh, again, I don't have to bend over that far to grab them. And then there's ergonomic palm swell black grips. I like the size wing tips I can rest my palm on. They just feel very nice and padded. Ergonomic brake levers as well, grooved in to where two fingers fit nice and snug. Again, there's no shifter on the handlebars. This is a single speed belt drive motor. And that's a Gates carbon belt drive and it has a 50,000 mile lifespan. And the nice thing about these, this system here is just maintenance free. Then there's a FSS performance saddle, kind of a really cool design. I actually like the uh, hollow part here, have nice airflow. And then there's Swabby Supermoto 27.5 by 2.8 inch tubeless ready tires. And then in the rear wheel, there's an Enviola auto shift hub and that handles all the shifting for you. Again, this is just a single belt drive system. I wanna give you a little demo of how the transmission works. I've got a 68 per, uh, RPM, 69. This is a 7% grade hill, a little steep, short hill. And I'm starting to climb now. And I'm feeling some resistance, but I definitely, it definitely has loosened up pedaling quite a bit. Love that automatic transmission. Still hitting 6970 RPM, which I, I maintain that same RPM pretty much on the flats going up the hill and then now coming down. So it's just effortless. You just hop on, you know, set it up the speed mode that you want, keep your constant uh, cadence and let the bike do the rest. That is awesome. I wanna talk some more in depth about the pedal assist sensitivity. I do have it on the highest speed mode and going uh, 10 miles per hour, if I stop pedaling, immediately cuts the power as you would expect, begin to pedal and it is, I mean, I can't even tell a difference from when I pedal to when the power kicks on. It is instantaneous, which is awesome. So on the right side, you have a cadence sensor. There's three buttons here, three options. They're, they're preset. So let me show you how this changes. I'm gonna just match my cadence at 70 RPM here. And then on uh, the first button, I definitely feel a lot more resistance in the cranks. If I try to keep up my same cadence, well, actually it dropped down to 60 to 63. On level two, felt some relief in the cranks. My RPM now is uh, around 62, 63. And then on three, that's the easiest. And I'm back up to 70, 71 RPM. And I like this because if you want a little bit more of a workout or you have a different cadence than I do, you can just switch it here. Now I have one of their first models if you guys pick one of these up, there's an app that connects to the hub where you can set these three buttons to any sort of cadence, to any cadence level that you like. And even on the easiest level, this isn't the type of bike where, you know, it does all the work for you. There's just a slight constant burn. My heart rate is up a little bit. You do have to put in some effort, which I like. It's a good combination of assist and your own power. I've lost another battery bar and I've gone 26.29 miles. Just down to my last battery bar and I've gone 36.14 miles. It has been a heck of a ride.
Well, I finally made it back, and as you can see, there's one battery bar. Now, that just barely turned about a mile ago. So I'm thinking I probably could have got another 10 miles. That's what I've been averaging throughout the course of the batteries, about 10 miles per battery bar. My app recorded 37 miles with over 1,700 feet elevation gain, which is just, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. You're pretty close to 50 miles for a 185 pound rider, which is, that's fantastic. And that's also topping the bike out. I was averaging 18, about 18 miles per hour the entire time. I did have a ton of stop and go as well. They were like consistent sections, but just uh, pretty hard riding. By far the best range I've ever had on any bike. There's no hill rating for the bike, but the motor does produce 60 Newton meters of torque. So I'm gonna show you how it can climb a 12% grade hill. Okay guys, this is the hill test. As you can see over there, there's a, this is the 12% grade for a half a mile. I'm gonna start to climb right off the bat. I've got three of the five battery bars and I'm in the highest mode here. And my lungs are at half capacity. So this would be a, a good test for the bike. Again, I apologize for how oh my, crazy my voice sounds. But anyway, I can hear that motor not too loud, but definitely a little bit louder than when going flat. And it's kind of an interesting sensation. This hill's not, you know, it's kind of st has steeper sections. And when it does, and I put a little bit more resistance on the pedals or effort, I can feel that motor deliver power just instantaneous. Steepest part through here going five, six miles per hour. And I'm getting a workout too. You know, my legs are burning. I'm panting a little bit, but uh, it's definitely doable. The bike makes that 12% hill feel like, like a two or 3% hill on a normal bike. Over the top, so the slowest that I went was, I think there was five miles per hour for a small section there. But uh, yeah, just, this bike gives you a workout. It just gives enough to get you to the top and makes you put in a little bit of effort. The Radiant comes with Magura hydraulic 180 millimeter disc brakes. Gonna go down the same hill and show you how well they work. And these brakes are designed for off-road, you know, downhill mountain biking. So you're gonna have plenty of stopping power. Gonna get up here to around 20, slightly press them. No pulsating, nice and smooth, sound great. A Little bit harder. Woo! <laughs> It was uh, skidding that back tire about uh, 20 feet, but man, they stop you in a quick hurry and they don't take a lot of uh, effort. They're very light, don't need a lot of pressure to engage them. Let me dive into the screen and the control pad. So the very bottom is the power button. Hit that on. This is a Shimano Steps LCD screen. This button here just changes through the different readouts, as you can see. On the right is the light button. And then the pad here on the left also, in that middle button changes the same thing as the uh, other button did. And then you got the up and down here to change the pedal assist level. If you hold that middle button down, you can enter the settings. And that's pretty easy to navigate through the settings. No guesswork there, just scroll down, select what you want to adjust, and there you go. The Radiant is waterproof, and they do offer a 30-day free return policy. Okay guys, well if you couldn't tell, I really like the bike. If you want something that, where you can just set it and forget it, and let it do the work for you, figure all the ins and outs of the trail, this is the bike to get. Super high-end parts, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's an awesome ride. If you want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also, be sure to check out my channel, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go, and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.